In 2013, the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program Management Conference began implementation of its Comprehensive Conservation and Management Plan for Alabama's estuaries and coasts. No time was wasted in getting to work. These are dispatches from the field. To me, Wolf Bay Watershed holds a very special place. As, as a child, this was where I swam. I, as, a, as a very young child, I would grab a cane pole and actually go fishing in these same creeks. And now, as an adult, to get to share this with my many children, I feel like this is a major part of my life, and I want it to be in my children and grandchildren's lives. In developing a new watershed management plan to address some of the urbanization effects that have occurred, and also to get you know some of the new data that that we could use to see where there really are problems, also to find lands to be able to conserve or preserve for the future. Marlon Cook with Cook Hydrogeology is currently undertaking a sediment analysis in the Wolf Bay watershed. I collect data at base flow conditions all the way to bank full. So we'll be out here in the driving rainstorm in, uh, in the wintertime uh, when, the, when the water level is, is up high. And then over that distribution of, of discharge events, we'll have a good representation of the total sediment loads moving down the creek. These sediment analyses have already been completed on creeks and rivers throughout the Bay Area. They're a critical first step in understanding watershed function through time. In Weeks Bay, we, we do have uh, an advantage. Uh, it was designated as a National Estuarine Research Reserve back in 1986. Um, the bay itself has a water use classification of outstanding natural resource water, and the Magnolia River actually has a classification of outstanding Alabama water. So uh, the local treasure we've all known about since I was growing up as a kid here is now being recognized by the state and the feds. Public involvement um, traditionally has been one of the more difficult aspects of a lot of these watershed management plans. For the Weeks Bay plan, we actually took a different approach. We had the large workshop where we had uh, a big group of farmers and a group of developers and a group of engineers and government officials and environmental organizations and all these, these different interests. The results uh, were really pretty surprising. Independently, each of these groups of, of individuals came up with pretty much the same list of priorities in the watershed. What we're seeing come out of it, the uh, flooding is a major issue, water quality concerns, particularly pathogens and sedimentation are an issue, concern about growth and development uh, and managing it appropriately so we don't degrade the watershed and the habitat. I know that very complicated issues like this require a process to be solved. People don't meet one time, come up with an answer and go implement it. This is something that takes iterations of evolution to come up with a solution. And people just have to be willing to commit themselves because the, the problem that needs to be solved has got to be solved. My name is Mimi Fern, and I'm here on the banks of Halls Mill Creek, which is one of the major tributaries of Dog River in Mobile, Alabama. And I remember when this creek was so clear, the water was so clear that when you swam you could see your feet. I've seen it change over time, but it's still a remarkable resource. If you look at the water quality data for Dog River and its tributaries, one of the major problems is low dissolved oxygen and another one is turbidity or the amount of sediment in the water. Both of those are related to basically runoff from the land. Okay, right now we're really lucky because we're working on a watershed management plan for the Dog River watershed and the Garrows Bend area that will identify problems associated with Dog River and also especially identify ways that we can work to resolve those problems. One of the things that we're really excited about is that the Watershed Management Plan has shown that there's a bottomland hardwood forest right almost in the middle of the watershed that's actually on Halls Mill Creek that's providing really valuable ecosystem services already. One of the reasons that bottomland hardwood forest works so well is that Halls Mill Creek actually has its headwaters all the way out in West Mobile. It's hilly out there. And where you have steep slopes like that, water moves very rapidly, it erodes. But because it picks up sediment out there, 
it's very effective at moving that on downstream. The bottomland hardwood forest is located right at the break of slope, so it's depositing it right now in that forest and holding it there. If we can actually acquire it and preserve it, means that those ecosystem services will stay in place for the future. If we lose it, the water quality in this creek is going to go down tremendously and it'll look a lot more like a Slava Creek, which is honestly probably the most problematic of the tributaries for Dog River. Because of the interconnectivity of the watershed surrounding Mississippi Sound, this past year, development of the Bayou Labatra watershed plan was expanded to include West Fall River and Dauphin Island. You know, the first big step is having people all come to the table and understand that, hey, we're in this together. So as long as there's that understanding and that, that willingness to work together, I think that's vital to the success of this whole plan. It runs deep, our, our heritage and our history, you know, if you're from the bayou, you know, you know these things. And we want our, our land preserved. We want the next generation to be able to enjoy what we have here. But we need our business. So there's a balance there. We don't want to put anybody out of business. We want them to, to help us preserve our land and, and protect our bayou. There are early implementation projects being undertaken as planning progresses. The Nature Conservancy will acquire 100 acres of land along the west side of the mouth of the Bayou Labatra River with plans for 28 acres of marsh restoration. It is really exciting on our end because here we are, the plan's not even finished yet and we've already got projects in motion. Historically, the family, my, my great-grandfather, grew oysters in Bon Secours Bay. And they would harvest the oysters, bring them in, and take them to market in Mobile. One of the first things that happened, I remember, that, that brought a lot of water into the river quickly was when Foley began to, to grow and the uh, drainage ditches there uh, were deepened and widened. And that brought the water here far more quickly and uh, tended to um, Tended, tended to change the river quite a bit. It silted in more quickly, and in fact, as a family, we don't grow oysters in Bon Secours Bay anymore it's because there's, in many cases, there's three, four, five feet of silt on top of where my great-grandfather and grandfather grew oysters. The Comprehensive Watershed Management Plan for the Bon Secours Bay Complex is currently out for public comment. Things that we found in the watershed were shoreline erosion in the Oyster Bay area. We also found a lot of litter, in the Bon Secure area, lack of agricultural buffers in the Skunk Bayou area. A lot of the public were concerned with water quality. That seemed to be a big push in all three watersheds. We actually have two areas that are going to be acquired through NIFWA funding that are in our plan as um, habitat conservation properties in the Oyster Bay watershed. Acquisition of these two sites will protect and restore approximately 935 acres of diverse coastal habitat in the city of Gulf Shores, including tidal marshes, maritime forests, and freshwater swamps. Fowl River has just enormous opportunities as far as fishing, boating, kayaking, swimming. We have uh, eight osprey nests and uh, at least six are occupied. And we have two eagles' nests. The eagles return every year. We have all the, all the flora and fauna that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> this watershed plan was very extensive, and what we found is that, you know, we really have a pretty clean river, but we do have a couple of issues. Uh, one of the issues was the tip of Mon Louis Island Point, where it enters into Mobile Bay. We have had erosion there for many years, but today the uh, tip has been restored the settling of the soil needs to occur, and then we also have to dig a, a stream and then plant the marsh. Recently, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund announced funding for the restoration of four spits in the intertidal area of the river. This project will reduce the risk of future harm to habitats necessary for sustaining a healthy fishery and improve the quality of water flowing into Mobile Bay. The whole idea was to engage residents to see if they were even aware that they lived in a watershed and to further explore how resilient they were to respond should a natural disaster occur, such as a Hurricane Katrina. And we learned that 
uh, by and large, a good 90-95% had no idea that they lived in a watershed. They did not realize that the Tolman Springs watershed was connected to Three Mile Creek and, and were not familiar even with the Three Mile Creek, uh, Creek Revitalization Program. And so what we were able to do is help them gain insight into the fact that, you know, these are opportunities to help revitalize, restore, improve the quality of life in your area by addressing an environmental hazard. Together with um, volunteers from my uh, university, South Alabama, we went um, to, to Pritchett's community. The aim of the activity is to get the people there to install rain barrel. So you familiar with rain barrel? It takes me back to when I was a little girl. Uh huh. And my mama and daddy would sit they what's called uh -huh. rain uh -huh. hills uh -huh. around, and they would wash with that water, yes. just like you say. Yes. Uh huh. And so that, that would be good. Yeah. So <laughs> if they um, are able to get the rain barrels, are you willing to? Install one and let's see how it how yeah, you I would like to see. Okay. You know, because it, that'll remind me back when I was a little girl. We're here today at Tiawassee Creek Stream Restoration, one of the few uh, restorations that the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program sponsored back with the NIFWIF funds. Um, as you can see, we have reestablished a natural stream environment. We connected floodplain to the stream channel and we're just excited to be a part of this project and also be the owner of it as the city of Daphne. We have joined together cities, state, federal agencies, all types of partners, local landowners to come together and restore Doe Leaf Watershed. The leadership of the NEP has allowed us to study the watershed, find the problems, and seek grant funding. And we're seeing tremendous success. Our streams are clearer, our citizens are, are happy, and we're really making a difference in the Dole Leaf Watershed. Well, you know, when we first started the project, it, it initiated with an ADM 319 grant in Spanish Fork called Joe's Branch Step Pools. From there, we, we got funding for 11 more projects. We've implemented the Tiawassee Creek Restoration, the Dole Leaf Creek Restoration, and several smaller restorations. We currently are working in Dole Leaf Watershed in the headwaters on Malbus Plantation property east of County Road 13. The unique thing about the, uh, the Doe Leaf Creek restoration is it has a huge education component. We're not only reaching out to engineers with workshops on stream restorations, but we're reaching Boy Scouts and school programs where they're coming out and touring these sites and understanding the part of restoration and how it plays a part of bringing our environment back to where it should be. An important component of restoration is ongoing monitoring to document ecosystem changes and improvements. We started uh, in 2006, was our, our first monitoring effort, looking at both water quality and sediment transport. So then we came in after the restoration was completed and, uh, and did our monitoring again. We have seen more than a 90% decrease in sediment load in Joe's Branch. Joe's Branch actually had the highest sediment load of any watershed that I had ever measured in my career. Eleven years ago we told the citizens that, you know, it might take ten years to see a difference. And we're ten years later, we are seeing a tremendous difference. And the, and the key to it is great partnerships. And um, I'd like to thank the NEP for all what they've done for us in Dole Watershed and Mobile Bay. Um, and the thing that's unique about that thank you is it's a thank you to everyone that's sitting in the room today. Because we're all part of the NEP. We are all on the CACs and the PICs and the GACs and all the different acronyms that the NEP has, but we're a part of the success, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you and the leadership of the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program and staff, and they're why we're here today, and they're why Doe Leave is being restored.